Anis grew up in Pakistan, where it's difficult to be a Christian. In Pakistan, it's, uh, they have a parliament law, it's called 295C. So they can use that law against you, that you said something against Islam, and they can actually put you to death, and it's legal. This made for a hard life for Anis, who was forced to hide his Christian identity. Because if, if I told them I'm Christian, so they would, they would bully me, and they will try to convert me. And, and, and forced me to convert and beat me and stuff like that. I was so scared. It was also a confusing time for him. In school, he was taught the beliefs of the Quran, and at home, the Bible. At home, I believe, like, Jesus, son of God. And like, over there, they're saying, no, he's not a son of God. He's just one of, one of the prophet God sent us. And I was, I was like, so, like, my, my faith was very shaken. When Anis was still a young boy, his father became a pastor and moved the family to a small town to start a church. And that's where the real persecution began. One night, at midnight, people burst into their home and began beating them. I think I was 10 years old at that time. They dashed me on the floor. I broke my tooth. I got some stitches here. And like I was like blood all over the place. And they pretty much left us dead. The attacks happened frequently and for many years. Then, one day, in broad daylight, while Anise was walking through the market alone, he was kidnapped. So someone came behind me, and I got knocked out. When I woke up, I was in a totally different environment. The area was totally different, and my body was aching. And I thought, like, maybe I'm dead, and maybe I'm in heaven, or maybe this is hell. I don't know where, where I am. And I started shouting, help me, help me, somebody help me. And I saw there's a cliff. I'm, like, on top of a cliff. I'm like, how did I get here? Anise was helped by some local people and soon discovered he was over 3,000 kilometers from home. At that time, I had no idea, like, what's happening. I was thinking, I was still thinking this is a dream. Like, I'm in a dream and this is, I'm just gonna wake up and say, oh, okay, I'm still home. But, like, it was, it was actually real. After several days of hitchhiking, Anise arrived back at home to learn the truth about what had happened to him. And some people were on the phone, they said, we have your son and we are, we gotta throw him off this cliff. You have to accept Islam right now. If you don't do it, we're gonna throw him right now. Then my dad said, as soon as they, they were saying this, God spoke to me right away, and he said, say no to them, and I'll bring your son back. And somehow my dad said no to them, and they hung up the phone, and they threw me off the cliff. Somehow I didn't actually go down all the way. If I went there, I, I would no more. And that was a turning point in my life. Like, actually, there's actually a God who actually exists, who actually gonna take care of all of us. Anise knew what happened to him was meant for God's purpose. He shared his story, and many who heard began coming to church and accepting Christ. I, I always went to church just because my dad was a pastor, and you know, just a regular Christian life, I was just going there. But that was a turning point, I'm like, yes, there's a God. He brought me home from all that. As Anise's faith grew, the persecution intensified, and he and his family were forced to flee their town for good due to greater threats on their lives. We stayed in hotels. We even stayed in a hospital for, for like a whole two months just to keep ourselves safe. And my dad said, okay, this is it. We should just go back. If they kill us, they will kill us because that's what the Bible said. They will kill you in my name. And we have to be example to those people. The same night, we went back to our beds and, and I heard this God's voice it was so clear. And God said, you're not going back. I got bigger plans for you. So we said, okay, we're not going back. We decided. Their incredible journey led them to Sri Lanka, where they survived a tsunami and a civil war before ultimately arriving as refugees in Canada in 2011. Today, Anis shares his testimony of the faithfulness of God during the most difficult times. Don't give up on God, because he never gave up on you. Because he loves you a lot, and every situation he puts you in, there's a, there's, there's a motive behind it. God, he's love. He actually does not give up on his people.